quantum computers are some of the most complex machines ever built, exploiting the weirdness of quantum physics to replace the bits, ones and zeros of conventional computers with qubits, quantum bits that can be both one and zero at the same time. The potential is for unimaginably powerful machines to solve problems ordinary computers never could. Hello, nice to meet you. Hi, Patrick Lyons, nice to meet you. Hi. But opening the UK's National nice Quantum Computing Centre is a tough gig, even for a minister with a pretty solid science background. When the then Prime Minister challenged his <laughs> cabinet to explain quantum to him, <laughs> two of them stupid enough to actually try and do that. <laughs> it was too tempting not to ask, can you explain quantum computing in a TV news soundbite? It's rather foolish to try and explain quantum computing, so you're asking me to be a fool, which I'm not going to do. Fairer question why the government wants to commit billions to advancing the technology. We see this as an investment for growth, which it absolutely is. It's where new companies are going to come from. Some of those are going to be very fast growing, create lots of jobs. And these sorts of technologies, whether it's quantum, whether it's AI, whether it's engineering biology, are the things of the future that are going to be the really disruptive technologies for all sorts of companies. Google says it's cracked a key challenge in quantum computing. The tech giant has unveiled a new quantum chip it claims can revolutionise computing by offering speeds far beyond traditional systems. Named Willow, Google says the new quantum chip can perform one standard test in under five minutes, one that would take one of today's fastest supercomputers 10 septillion years. That's more than the years the universe is believed to exi have existed. In a blog post, Google said that even under ideal conditions, it would take a regular computer a billion years to get the same results as Willow. The Willow chip has 105 so-called qubits, the building blocks of quantum machines. They're super fast, but also very error prone. In other words, qubits can become upset by something as tiny as a passing subatomic particle. Google says it's now found a way to make them more reliable adding that the new chip can also correct errors in real time, marking a big step towards rebuilding a practical quantum computer. Meanwhile, tech billionaire Elon Musk took to X, his social media platform, to praise Google's latest quantum computing breakthrough. Musk replied with the words, wow, on Google's post about Willow. To which Sundar Prichai, the CEO of Google, replied, we should do a quantum cluster in space with Starship one day. Open Quantum Design is the world's first open source full stack quantum computer. If it reaches its potential, uh, it, it will change humanity in a lot of amazing ways. The hope is that the computer will be complete by the end of this year or by early 2026, something that's been in the works for the Institute of Quantum Computing for quite some time. It's an investment that is over almost 10 years. So, and it is millions of dollars. It means that we can reap the benefits. Ding also zoned in on quantum computing, but as Georges-Olivier Raymond from um, Pascal, which is a quantum computing company, said, it's going to be some time before all of that plays out. The question of timeline is a, is a very good one, and there are different timelines. Uh, some people talk about 10 to 15 years. It was the take from uh, NVIDIA CEOs a couple, a couple of days ago. And they, but there are uh, earlier solutions that we are developing at Pascal. And we are convinced that we will see the first impact on the business in two to three years, starting competing against classical technologies and bringing value to end users. Because we have a, a different technology, a different way of using that. And will impact, I mean, all the sectors, starting maybe with the energy sector. We have a lot of use cases, you know, optimizing the electrical grid, uh, thinking of charging electrical vehicles, uh, new materials for batteries, things like that, uh, in the financial sector as well, okay. uh, and also drug discovery. I mean, we, we, we developed a, a very great proof of concept with, a, uh, with French, a French partner named Qubit Pharmaceutical, and we developed a new tool to predict the reactivity of talking sites of protein. You mentioned energy and you know, safeguarding the planet, encouraging progress on, on nature, on climate goals through innovation and is also very much a focus here, here at Davos. It's no surprise since you know, last year was the hottest on record and we've had these extreme mm -hmm. weather events that have been causing devastation around the world. Can quantum computing help that? Yes, absolutely. And quantum computers are also a part of the solution. First of all, because they can help developing new solutions. Uh, as an example, with BISF, we work on predicting weather pattern. 
Okay. Uh, we can work also on. I, may, I mentioned uh, the energy sector, uh, grid electricity. We can we, we can help them reducing, uh, optimizing the distribution of electricity and reducing the loss. So first impact that quantum computers can directly have on the global footprint. And uh, I mean the cherry of, of the cake, if you want to, is that quantum computers are also part of the solutions because they are also very low energy intensive. It takes only a couple of kilowatts to, to, to operate our quantum computers. Well, next we're going to a story from Waterloo's tech sector, which could have big implications. A team is banding together in a new nonprofit to build what's described as the world's first open source quantum computer. CTV Spencer Turcott now on why worldwide access to this kind of a computer could help solve some of our toughest problems. So what you're seeing here is a uh our trapped iron uh, quantum processor. And it's in the process of being built at the University of Waterloo's Institute for Quantum Computing. The point of building it to break down barriers. If more people having access to the technology, the better in general for the society. The problem is few people in the world have access to these powerful machines. A quantum computer helps solve complex problems far quicker than a regular computer, such as finding a specific drug molecule that binds to a protein so that it cures a disease without having a bunch of side effects. The trouble is quantum computing has commercial and intellectual property protections, often used in the for-profit private sector. So that's where Waterloo-based nonprofit Open Quantum Design. The National Lab brings 12 different quantum computers under one roof. This one sealed in a steel vessel because it's 24 qubits must be kept colder than outer space. In this lab, they're taking a completely different approach using microwaves and lasers to trap and control individual ions as qubits in a vacuum. That's the pumps that you can hear behind me. But whatever approach to quantum computing you take, the biggest challenge is scaling the systems up so they can perform useful calculations. On paper, quantum computers promise to crack the most chaotic problems, how molecules combine to make new drugs, the formation of storms or forecast financial crashes. But we're not there yet. Within this next decade, you will start seeing quantum computers in a practical way doing better than regular computers, classical computers in performance or cost or energy consumption. But to reach that ultimate goal where we can solve problems that have never been solved before or are impossible to solve, we're talking a couple of decades from now. Yeah. The potential of quantum supremacy is the reason for the government's big bet, but it could be a long while before it pays off.